In this video, I'm showing how I set up my roach bins. The goal is to set up a bioactive self-cleaning setup that's more natural. I start by adding a layer of substrate. It's a mix of eco-earth, worm castings, and rehydrated wood pellets, similar to what people use for isopod setups. Next, I add a layer of leaf litter. Next, I add layers of tree bark. I originally did it in a stacked position, but I later changed it to a horizontal position. I'm using the smaller pieces to create gaps and crevices in between the larger pieces. This will give the roaches a place to hide and feel more secure. Next I add the cleanup crew which are powdered blue isopods and springtails. And finally I add the roaches. This first bin is Dubia roaches. Dubia roaches are a ground dwelling species from Central and South America. The males have wings, the females do not. I used the same process to set up a bin for my Madagascar hissing cockroaches, along with my Halloween hissing cockroaches. I've used similar setups in the past to breed hissing cockroaches, but this is my first time using this idea for dubia roaches. My goal is to keep them in a more naturalistic setup, and to allow them to live similar to how they would live in the wild. I'm hoping that keeping them in a more natural setup will help them reproduce better. You can also make some modifications to it. Instead of using the sheets of tree bark like I did, you can use cork flats or cork rounds for them, or even pieces of driftwood. There are many ways to set up roach bins and successfully keep and breed roaches. In the past I've used setups that were just rows of egg crates for the roaches to climb on and live in. And I've also done the rows of egg crates with substrate in the bottom. I successfully kept them bred different species of roaches using those methods. And the bioactive setups I'm setting up now is a way I've done in the past to keep hissing cockroaches. And something new for me to try with the dubias to see how they do on it. It's really up to the person keeping and breeding roaches to determine which method or which container setup is best for them. Everybody has their own tips and tricks and variations of setups that they've had great success with. Some people will have more success than others with certain methods. And you might have to make a few modifications to figure out what works best for you. There are a few pros and cons to setups like this. 
Some of the pros for this kind of setup is it gives the roaches an opportunity to live a more natural lifestyle. I found that the nymphs or baby roaches along with the adults like to burrow into the substrate and hide. And another pro is that I won't have to clean it as often. Once the colony becomes established normally you don't have to clean the bin out but every six to eight months. A couple of the cons are that it makes the bin heavier which can get strenuous if you're in the pickup and move a lot of bins every day. Another con is that it does take longer to find all the roaches and sort them out. I'm going to give the bins a few months to establish and get the roaches time to reproduce. And in a few months I'll probably make an update video on how everything's going with them and how well this method is working for me. Later on down the road when my colonies get a lot bigger, I might set up three different bins. One being with just the egg cartons, one being with the egg cartons and substrate, and then one being a bioactive enclosure. I'll put the same amount of roaches in each bin. I'll do it as an experiment to see if the methods of keeping affect the colony's success, and to see if one has higher or faster reproduction than the others. If you keep any kind of cockroaches, whether for pets or for feeders, let me know in the comments below which method you use to keep them. And make sure you like and subscribe to keep up with what we're doing. And let me know what you think of these setups.